Okay. Be happy, 54. Okay. Um, hi, Mitch. How are you doing? I want to ask you a question. Do you think that there are white Bigfoot out there somewhere? Thank you for sharing the videos with me. Keep up the good work. Okay. Uh, well, we know that the Yeti, whether they are related or not, is basically uh, some of them are white. Um, the Amesty doesn't have a whole lot of uh, body hair, but they do use skins. The um, Most of the Bigfoot uh, that are in the Arizona area have black fur or they're brown. Uh, or various shades of brown. Um, I have seen a video of one guy that claimed he found uh, where a Bigfoot had cut off all of his hair or a lot of his hair uh, with a broken bottle, with broken glass. And uh, he theorized, or it was a theory, that they cut their hair to... Uh, prepare for summertime that it was it, the winter growth and it was there to keep warm and it was now starting to warm up so they cut it off okay so yeah there's a good possibility there's white ones out there too but then again uh, in nature there's albinos uh, it happens buffalo calves um, you know stuff like that mice and so forth if from time to time you get a white one. And I don't see any reason why that can't happen with Bigfoot. Okay. Um, one rebuttal I get from all the time from Bigfoot skeptics is, why is there no fossil record of Bigfoot? I toyed with this idea that fossils had been found but not identified correctly. Because before DNA they were just measured, weighed, uh, and classified. A lot of times they were given uh, Latin names, um, but none of them said this is, you know, Bigfoot. And then after DNA, then we start getting more and more fossils um, of unknown hominins. Okay, so. If you really want to know, I would suggest reading the book Abominable Snowman, Legend Come to Life by Ivan T. Sanderson. He knows the Yeti and the Amesty and the Aran and all those other hominins that were over there. And he knows about the bones that were found. And these are not the same bones that were tested, DNA tested, um by the doctor that went over there to study the Bigfoot. And I think you know what I mean. But these bones are in museums. They're, they're in various places on display. Uh, and I would find it very interesting if they would allow a sample of DNA from those bones, if it can be retrieved, and have it um, compared to Dr. Ketchum's analysis. Now I'm not talking whether or not it's been accepted in the big, you know, scientific world due to a piece of paper, um, you know, the whether it's been accepted, the paper that was written is accepted by the scientific community. I don't care. What I care about is the science, the sequence genomes. Okay, if those match up with across the world then something is there. So let's stick strictly to the science and not the paper. Okay? Uh, throw the politics out. I don't care about politics. I want to know if there's something out there. Okay, science is science. Science doesn't lie. <clears throat> well, let's put it this way. Sometimes it doesn't lie. I've heard of some places where they have lied to protect uh, what they thought the masses. Okay, um, Sanderson is very verbose. He is—he definitely knows about the uh, Yeti, Amistad, and Yarn, 
and other species in that area. Uh, wade through the copious verbiage and you may see why and how fossils found in these areas are discounted and dismissed. Okay, I have always thought there would be a good project to test those bones and fossils against the Ketchum study. Um, and before we get into an argument of from non-Ketchum fans about the study, there is a big difference between the sequencing science and the verbiage on the paper. What is this? You know, and so, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, let's see if there's any matches. It would be a good academic effort if somebody was to take that project on. It won't be me. I'm busy out there in the field doing what I do. So, that's about it for the today's blog. And, um... Uh, We'll see if we can squeeze another one in before I head for the mountains.